Okay, folks, so I have um, updated my version 3 <clears throat> video of Golf 101. And I think what's important to look at it now, unfortunately, this opens sort of a Pandora's box, just playing golf, period. Be a beginning player, an intermediate player, even an expert player, um, I find that there are some significant differences um, in, let us say, golf etiquette, <laughs> okay? So, so we kind of need to make a um, video on golf etiquette, especially if you're going to go out and play golf. You're not necessarily the best player out there. Uh, you certainly have been playing since you were 15 and now you're 65 or 55. You're, you know, you're not a member. You got a course, you're not a member. Um, <clears throat> you're not, um, uh, on, you didn't play on your college team, your high school team, and you're in your twenties and thirties and forties, you know, and I find out of all the golf I've played, all the different courses, I've been playing for a long time. I played a lot of different courses, I played a lot of different environments over many years, probably close to 30 years. And the, the things that I've noticed that there are two things that really kind of, kind of really cause trouble on a golf course, okay? Uh, one is playing, actually three things. Okay, let's, uh, let's just say three, three things in general, okay? Uh, people who want to play fast on a course that's busy, and there can be different manifestations of this particular personality, but they can be a big problem, okay? Um, and I'll get into how. So when we talk about all these different chart matrices and yardage, you know, um, charts and learning to play your, your game and different power levels, different clubs, different chips and everything like that, um, <clears throat> There are certain factors that are associated with that. You're, you're learning. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to hit bad shots. Uh, you're going to play less than stellar golf. And you're going to irritate the uh, club champion from New Jersey who's used to playing at his members-only course. And for some unfortunate reason, he's playing at the same course you're playing at because now he has to wait for you to play before he can play unless he decides not to wait for you to play before he plays. Um, or, you know, the guy that's the issue, I'm assuming it's not you, but there are some ways in which you're going to inhab inevitably bring out the worst in, in this person, okay, while you're taking... Uh, a mulligan or a second shot or you're setting up for a difficult shot and you're waiting for you know you you to get your head together for this shot or you're waiting for the group ahead of you to do that before you hit into them okay or near them or towards them okay all the issues that can come out of this uh because you decide to wait and be polite and not hit into the group ahead of you, even though they're on the green and they're 200 yards out and, and someone behind you is standing on a hill in the sun, you know, with the rush and a bug up his ass going, you can't hit it that far or, you know, whatever. And, and certainly maybe you can't, but that doesn't mean that you feel like hitting up on a green while somebody is, maybe 50 yards outside your range, and you don't want to hit the ball up towards them so it lands 50 yards away from them. They hear it thump just off their shoulders, behind their back, while they're trying to putt, you know. And people tend not to like that. And I personally don't like that when somebody hits towards me and a ball lands right behind me, even though there's no chance or really no chance that they would have hit me I don't want it landing behind me, 25 feet, 25 yards behind me. That I think is not even sane to hit a ball 
so close to someone that they have to worry about it going onto the green while they're trying to play or hitting them while they're trying to play or bouncing off something near them and then ricocheting into you while you're trying to play. I don't think that makes any sense, okay? So I have a personal tendency when I'm in such a situation, I'll wait for them to get off the green and get in their carts and go off to the next hole, okay? So the one thing you have to understand when you're playing on a day where there's a lot of people playing is that a lot of times they'll get off the green, they'll go sit in their cart for a minute and they'll score their card. Or they'll go to the cart, go to the next green and stop out of eyesight of the next tee box, but still in eyesight of the green that you're playing. So they're maybe 20 feet, 20 yards behind the green that you're trying to play. There's all kinds of issues that can happen on a golf course besides what you think or someone else thinks is the optimal situation. And you have to make allowances for this or you're going to have a lot of conflicts with a lot of people because everybody has a different idea of how golf should be played. So my personal thing is I like to let people get out of the way. Just get out of the way. I don't want to look at you before I play a shot. Okay, I don't want to look at you. I don't want to worry about you. I don't want to worry about you moving. Then I don't have to worry about them. And that helps me make a better shot. And if I make a better shot, then the odds are that I'm going to be closer to the green. I'll be on the green, off the green, and down to the next hole before the person behind me gets all uptight having to sit there in a fairway and watch me play. Okay? So there are, there are a lot of things you really have to worry about when you're playing golf. But, you're worrying is the issue. The person behind you isn't worrying. They're just having a shit in the middle of the course on a tee box, you know, waiting for you to get out of the fairway or on, in the fairway waiting for you to get out off the green, you know. So par four, there's a tee shot, there's the fairway shot, there's the playing of the green, and those are three different strokes, okay. Par four can easily be par five, six, seven, drops, balls lost. There's all kinds of things that say that that par four is going to take a lot longer than that guy wants it to take. And he has to wait. Okay. Second thing, if you go up to a green on the tee box and you finish the hole and the guys are still there on the green, I'm on the tee box waiting for the person in front of them to move. You have to wait for the guys in the tee box to hit, then go to their shots then take their shots before you can hit your shot. So there's a lot of things that can happen on a course that can cause slow play. People who are full of ants in their pants, okay, are gonna get upset about every little thing that keeps them from hitting. Everything. Having to wait for the tee box to clear, having to wait for the fairway to clear, having to wait for the green to clear and having to wait to get on the green. You know, just there's things, maybe there's a, a cart girl out in the cart on the, on the, on the, on the path. That's going to take a couple of minutes for three or four guys to get their beverages. Meanwhile, they're in range from the tee box and you can't hit. So the problem that I found is this doesn't happen often, but it does happen. And what you have to watch out for are people who are just going to say, fuck it, and hit on you anyway. That's number one, okay? Number two, guys who don't want to get involved with anybody else in the course, so they'll play music and just get into their own zone and not worry about anybody else in the course, okay? This, is, this has become a thing over the past, I'd say, five years or so. You have a lot of people out on the golf course playing music in their carts. And then they'll play music in their carts at different volumes. If they, if they think they can blast the music, they'll do that. And, and if they, they're you know, near the green with their cart playing the music and they're on the green and then there's another green adjacent to that green, which does happen a decent number of times. So the cart is just as close to the other green as it is to their green. 
but they left their music playing in the cart so they could hear it at the rink. They don't really give a shit that somebody else is playing on an adjacent fairway or an adjacent green. That's if they're right next to you. The third thing that can happen, you can hear them from halfway across the course. They're playing it so loud. Fourth thing, there's some guy in a house behind the course, you know, uh, next to the course playing his music and you can hear it just as loud as if you're in the house. So there's all kinds of issues that can come up with that, with, with carts, um, with, uh, with spacing and with uh, music. Whereas nine times out of 10, most of the time, by the time you get to the third or fourth hole, the spacing is fine, everything's fine. Um, you don't really have to wait for anybody ahead of you. Or if you do, it's because they're on an adjacent fairway coming back towards you and you have to be careful not to hit them in their fairway, right? Which has a definite potential for happening when there's no trees or bushes or anything between the two fairways and the fairway is an adjacent fairway coming back the other way, okay? Simple thing. Um, so you need to know, what I'm getting to here is you need to know that there are times when you have the right to hold people up behind you and there are times when you don't. And people will argue with you about playing through your hole, driving through, you know, through your fairway while you're trying to play, driving past your green while you're trying to putt, driving past your tee box while you're trying to tee off. There are people, there are going to be people, we call them assholes, who are going to just not give a fuck what the fuck you're doing. Or, and they go, oh, I'll just be a minute. I'm, I'm just going over here. I've got an emergency. Blah, blah, blah. You know, all kinds of excuses for what they're doing to cause trouble with other golfers and then not even care and then expect that the other golfers are just, hey, no big deal. Sure, go right ahead. Have a great time. Whatever. Do whatever you want to do. So um, if you're going to take shots on a course and there's a good chance that you'll miss your shot, you can bet there's going to be somebody on the group behind you that says, oh, that guy sucks, blah, blah, blah. And if you take two shots or if you go looking for your ball in the weeds, and I've seen this happen. It's the funniest thing. We've seen people tramping around in the long grass looking for the ball. If you're going to spend five minutes out there looking for your ball. There are going to be people behind you that are grinding, grinding their teeth. I guarantee you. The other problem is the people behind them are going to grind their teeth at them and so on. Because everybody behind that person who's spending time on a course is causing everybody else to wait the entire time. And it, it all adds up. It all stacks up. If people are trying to play too fast, too hard, you know, they can cause a lot of trouble out on a golf course because they're just creating all this angst. Left, right, front, and center. And, you know, you pass people by and you go from one hole to the tee box to another hole. You know, there's times when the course folds over in itself. You pass by these people. There's going to be people out there talking while you're trying to play. That's distracting. You can hear them fine from 100 yards down the, the fairway from the tee box. And, and when a course is really busy in the summer, these things, you know, people get hot. They get tired. Tempers get short. Okay. Trust me. So you need to know if you're going to play a course, you need to know when you can take time and do the extra stuff that needs to be done when you're not, you know, um, a, a 70 handicap, or, sorry, a, a, a scratch golfer, and you're only taking four shots per hole at the most, okay? There's, if you're not that player, there's, there's stuff going on other than that that you have to do, that takes time. Or if you are that player and you take the full 15 minutes per hole, okay, like Kevin Na or somebody, that also takes time. You might be playing really low scores, but you're still taking every freaking second you can get on the course. So I'd make some suggestions for how to deal with that, no matter what your scrap, your, your uh, handicap is. No matter how long you've been playing, no matter how many years you've been playing, no matter how good you are, no matter what you're out there you think you're doing or whatever, just, I'm just playing golf. People, people, people play music while they play golf. Like some people like now think it's, it's absolutely okay and not a problem. And in fact, they have a right to do it. The worst thing about people that I hate is when they think they have a right to do something that they absolutely don't have a right to do. Okay. I don't know if there's a rule in the rules of golf against playing golf on music on a, on a course in your cart, or if most courses say they, they don't allow people to play music in their carts. But if there's one thing I know that's borderline, 
just plain wrong. It's playing music on a golf course, okay? And, and same thing with cell phones, same thing, any kind of noise source, anything unusual, talking loudly while you're playing, yelling about shots, screaming about, ah, I hit this, blah, blah, blah. You know, creating all this unnecessary noise on the golf course is not your right to do that, okay? It's distracting and disturbing and annoying, not just to the other people who are playing, but also to the people who live in houses near the golf course. The worst thing that's gotta be about playing golf or playing at a course where there's other people that live in the houses near the course is people in the houses talking, making noise while you're trying to play. And the same thing for the people that live in a course is every Tom, Dick and Harry talking about how great their shot was. Oh, I have to do this. Oh, you know, yelling down the course, all this kind of stuff. It, it just, at some point, it's just too much. Okay, so the one thing you don't want to do is be apologetic about doing things that you have the right to do, like play golf. You have the right to play. No one can tell you to play faster. No one can tell you that you're taking too many shots, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you have a certain amount of time that you are allocated to play the course. Normally four minutes, uh, four hours and 30 minutes, which is 15 minutes per hole, you can take that entire 15 minutes per hole all the way around the course and you will be at pace. Most players are not at pace when it's busy because you have to wait those extra times for the guy ahead of you to hit their tee shot and get out of the way before you can even start the hole. So you normally end up waiting five to 10 minutes between holes. You, you know, it, there's no way you can keep pace in that situation. The course is going to be slow. Everybody's gonna be late. Everybody's gonna start after their assigned tee time and you're gonna take five, five and a half hours, sometimes six hours to play the course. Forget it, it's not gonna be on pace. So all you really have to do is remember, step on a tee box in the first tee, you hit your shot, you have four hours and 30 minutes to play the rest of the course. If anybody is giving you shit beyond that, ignore them. If they're being an asshole about it, ignore them. If they're being polite and saying, you know, do you mind if we pass you, whatever, et cetera, you gotta negotiate the fact that everybody's waiting and even if they pass you, they'll still be waiting for the group ahead, okay? And there are rules for this. You, you have, Twosomes can pass threesomes, threesomes can pass foursomes. Singles cannot technically pass anyone and anyone can pass a single, okay? The advantage of being a single is you can take two or three shots on the course every time. You can play two or three balls, okay? You can play extra shots. Um, normally when I'm playing a single, I'm playing twice as fast as the people anywhere else at the course that are even doubles. I'm playing twice as fast as they are. And a lot of times I do drop an extra ball or whatever. And that way I get to play a lot of these difficult shots that I'm talking about playing. I get to go ahead and take two or three shots without a problem. I rarely have people waiting for me, but sometimes somebody will sneak up behind me when I'm not paying attention. That does happen. And then I usually, if I'm just taking my tee shot, I'll play my first my first ball up and, and, and go to the green and, and move off. Or if I'm I've got five balls scattered on the fairway, I'll I'll just drive up to the green, find any balls that I find around the green, and I'll just go. I really go pick balls and stuff like that if I know somebody's sitting behind me because I don't like them people sitting behind me waiting. I don't like it. I, I I just it's distracting for people to sit behind me waiting. So if if I'm in any way holding them up from hitting, I usually will jump in my cart, go to the green. If I find a ball or two in a green, I'll pick it up and then I'll go to the next hole because getting to the next hole gives me a clean slate. I, I now know there's somebody on the tee box, but I can go to the next hole and have pretty much have the whole, a lot of times have the, the whole course to myself, except for some guy trying to race around playing um, Twilight. But in any case, just gonna say this from long experience, just gonna say this, you know, trust me on this, okay? Somebody's being an asshole with you in the course, don't deal with them, okay? Just don't say a word to them. Just do not talk to them. Let them do whatever the fuck they're gonna do, okay? Don't say a word to them. 
if they're being cordial, respectful, you know, so, um, guy and his wife or guy and his kids or something like that, you know, usually will be respectful, cordial, okay? You know, and if they're holding you up and you want to pass them, you can ask them to pass you. If you're holding them up and they want to pass you, which does happen. Sometimes you get guys, they get their, drag their wife out in the cart with them and all they want to do is hit driver and and um, one approach shot to pick up the ball and go to the next hole. They just want to finish nine holes in like an hour or something like that. This does happen. You know, let them go. Just, pfft, dude, it's just not worth it. It's not complicated, okay? But whatever you do, don't get into a fight with them. Don't get into an argument with them. Don't. Harsh words, <laughs> hot stares, and definitely no chest-to-chest -chest stuff, okay? Just let it go because it will aggravate you far more than you will feel any kind of redemption or anything by getting into an argument with them. Just let it go, trust me. You can't really play your game when your mind is on some douchebag three holes down the road, okay? So I'm putting this last part of the video in together for people so they can understand that how to deal with keeping pace and how to deal with taking multiple shots, how to deal with not going off in the weeds looking for your ball. Just go to your Walmart or what Target or whatever, get the cheapest ball they have on the rack, okay? Uh, I usually play nitros or they're like uh, $24 for, for 48 balls. <laughs> Some, they're 50 cents a ball, literally. There's, there's no, and I, I'll buy new balls, but I'm not going to spend a lot of money for it. I have, I have two boxes of 28 balls in my car right now after losing several balls when I played Falcons Ridge and, and also some when I played Conestoga. I, I'm still way ahead. Okay, just let it go. It's a golf ball. Let it go. It's not going to kill you. You're playing a $75 course. Let that $50, 50 cent ball go. You're playing a $130 course, let that 50 cent ball go. You're playing a $200 course, let that 50 cent ball go. If it's five balls, that's 250. Let it go. Trust me, you'll be much happier that way. You got plenty of other things to worry about besides some douchebag from Wisconsin or from Chicago who wants to play a $250 course at twilight for half price and finish it in three hours. You got many other problems to deal with beside that. That guy is just not gonna get done and that's just how it is.